Hi, my name is Dylan Cuyava. I've been with Greenmark eight years now, uh, service technician. Uh, we're going to talk about dry system calibrations today. So the first thing you want to do when you're getting ready to set up your machine is you want to take density of your product. Uh, and it is important to do this density test every time uh, you load product or change products because it does change. Um, so we're going to take this here. Uh, this comes with every machine. You're going to dip it into your product and you just want to fill it up. It doesn't matter if you pack it in there, if you shake it in there, and then you'll see numbers here. So you just want to take your finger and you're going to balance it out until it's level. So this is about 65. So we'll take that number and we'll write it down. So we can remember it later to put in our display. Next thing we're going to do, so you want to check your crush strength of your material. If you have your fan speed set too high, you're basically going to make dust out of the back of the machine. That's wasting product. You're not going to get it down like you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this crush tester. It has a piece of, piece of paper on here. So when you press down, it's going to hold your spot. Um, so go ahead, when you're doing a mixed material, so you want to separate your product if you're doing a mixed product. Um, you basically want to find the, find the lowest crush strength because that's going to be our maximum fan setting we can set without making powder out the back. So I separated these. Um, this one's pretty hard as you can tell. Uh, that went all the way to eight. And then these two are about the same when you do it. So it's three and a half. About five. Uh, so you want to do that 10 times, um, and then that's going to give us an average. So you want to take those 10 numbers and average them together. So just for uh, simplicity's sake, we'll say that we came up with three. The next thing you want to do is grab your SGN tester. Um, so that's size grade number of your material. Um, basically what it is is it's measuring the material in millimeters times 100. And that's gonna all go into a chart to figure out our initial settings. So you would fill up your first column and then you would actually shake this down. And there's different size mesh in here. So the material is gonna fall through and fill up these columns. So if you look, after you're done shaking it, we've got percentages on this side and then values at the top for each column. This column, 240, has 80%. And then this column here, 340, has 20%. So that's 100% of your material. So we're going to take those numbers. And we're going to do, we're going to do 80% of 240. is 192. Then we're going to take 20% of 340 is 68. We're going to add those together to give us 260. Okay? So you want to remember that number. We're going to use that on our chart. You also remember your crush strength. So each one of these kits comes with a nice cheat sheet, basically. So you're gonna find your granule mesh, which ended up being 260. So it gives you a range. We're between 220 and 300. Then you wanna move over to your crush strength. So three, that gives us a maximum spinner speed of 650 to 700. That's the top of the line you wanna go before you're gonna start pulverizing your material and making that dust like we talked about. So then you can go to your next uh, column, and that depends on if you have a floater or a, a post machine or a real crap machine. If we follow that column over, basically with this machine here, with a, with a floater machine, you can expect to spread 75 to 80 feet. So that's a good starting point, so you're not trying to throw it out there as far as you can. Um, and that'll come in really handy with the catch test that you do at the end. So we'll just write down on your notepad, your max RPM, and then we're going to go your expected feet. And that's just for your reference, so you're kind of narrowing in 
that range of values that you could possibly end up with. Also important when you're doing a catch test, say you put new fan blades on this season and you're going to go out and you're going to do a spread pattern catch test. You want to make sure that you take this material off there. I know you're gonna, you guys are going to say, well, it's going to wear off there in a week or two, you know, when we run a bunch of material through it. But if you're doing your catch test with that on there, it's actually going to change your, your spread pattern because you've got a rough surface versus a really smooth surface. So you guys could do this yourself, but if you take it and actually dump it on there, you can see it kind of spreads out and drags a little bit versus if you grind all that paint off there, it tightens up and it slides right off. So believe it or not, that is pretty important to getting consistent results. So now we have those values written down and noted. Uh, we're going to have Brett show you how to actually put those in the display. And then we can do a spread test after that, uh, see how the machine's performing. Hi, I'm Brett Harrison. I've been with Greenmark for four years now, and I'm a field service technician. All right, so now that we've got all of our values and our numbers from our calibrations we did earlier, we're going to go through and set up our, our machine for it. So we're going to go down to our setup menu. And right now we are coming off of a two product variable rate spreading and we're going to go to a single product. We're going to change our product name to what we're currently at. Hit OK. Both of our products are the same and this is important for a factor we'll talk about here shortly. Our spinner speed can be a maximum of 700 RPMs. We're going to go ahead and change that here. We're going to hit edit. So Dylan set a maximum of 700 RPMs. We're going to err on the safe side and put it at 650 to start this test. Also based on our, our calculated width, we're going to be at 80 feet and we're going to see how that goes. We can adjust as needed. We're going to come into our product menu here. And we're going to talk about bin chaining. This is why it's important to have both of your products be the same when you are spreading the same product. Bin chaining will allow you to run this with the front bin will be empty. It will automatically start the second bin spreading. That way there are no skips or gaps in your coverage. And to do that, we will go here and select auto bin 1 to bin 2 and we will go through and check bin 2 just to verify that it is indeed the same and there is more than one way to do this you can chain it bin 2 to bin 1 or you can do it manually if your product is below your bin level sensors auto however will give you the best performance from the majority of your spreading And after this, we'll go do our catch test and we'll see our results. All right, now that we've got our numbers set up through our display, based on the calculations we previously did from Dylan, we can finally set up and see that our machine has done the spread test here. We've collected all of our product out of each of our individual baskets. And now that we've got all of our product out of our catch bins, we've got it all in our device here and we've got it spread out so we know what bin was what and what distance it was set at. And as you can see across the board, starting from our driving center, We've got a nice even line of product all the way across until we get to about 80 feet and then we've got a drastic drop off which is about half of our material and that's how we know how we should set our spread width. All right so that concludes our spread test and our calibration of the dry system. Uh, you can take your results and hopefully fine tune your machine as every application is a little bit different but that'll give you a great starting point. This kit number is actually BKK10741. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local Greenmark dealer.